Today I'm going to give you guys a update of what's happening at all of our plots as we prepare for the fall and winter season. That's coming up next on The Urban Farmer. Might as well start right here in my front yard. So high rotation plot, all of these beds are now on their third rotation. Some of them have some longer season crops in them like these carrots. These should be ready in two more weeks. And we've got some uh, beet greens up here which are just component mixes for our that go into our salad mix. We've got these turnips will be cropped out this week and uh, well this week or early next week. I'll replant that bed again before the uh, for the fall. I imagine I won't put spinach in that because it won't be late enough. I can't really plant spinach in the ground until early to mid September so that will probably go to some other quick green. I might just put it back to, I might just put beet greens in there again. And uh, this parsley has been going all season. Parsley does really well and it, it does really well in the summer too. You can just keep keep cutting it. I've gotten so many cuts of this right now, I've lost track. This, this cilantro chunk has flowered, it's no longer good, so we'll pull that out and plant something else in its place. Uh, this chard has been going all summer long. Chard's a great crop for that, and I only need about eight feet of bed for it, so I don't do much. These spring onions are pretty much just for me. I, start, I sell a little bit of them here and there, but it's just something that I like to eat. Uh, I don't really grow them for the market anymore or restaurants. It's just they're they're just not really worth it. I don't get enough demand for them. So this plot has been super productive all season and will continue to be so. But we're starting to get shade from my house as the sun recesses into the sky as we approach the fall equinox. So that's why I've got red Russian kale planted here because that will be in and out of the ground because these these two beds here will be in shade pretty quickly and these carrots should be out of the ground before that shade becomes an issue for that bed there. In my neighbor's back yard here, this plot's been super productive. It was the first season on this plot this year. And all of these beds will have at least three crops in them by the end of the season. Uh, not quite four, just because we didn't get into production until a little bit later. But we've got fall carrots planted here, just starting to emerge. And these, this whole plot is going to be covered in poly low tunnels going into the fall and we're going to have one bed space between each of them. I've talked about that on previous videos. reason for that is so when snow lands, it doesn't go between the tunnels and push them over. So I like to keep one, keep one empty bed in between the tunnels. That bed will, those beds that are in between will be planted with quick growing crops that will harvest right up until the edge of the uh, outdoor season, so probably at right up till mid-November. I had a really good tomato season. You can watch my last video about my tomato season in review. But um, this tunnel done really well. Probably going to pull this tunnel out. I'm still waiting on a quote from a greenhouse builder. But probably going to pull this tunnel out and build a bigger one in its place. And then as we get closer into the fall, the greenhouse here will be seen a lot more production, a lot more planting of sunflower and pea shoots and even some nursery stuff happening. Also going to be putting in a vertical hydroponic wall that was uh, donated to me by a company called Vicinity in South Africa. So I'm going to be demoing some vertical hydroponics. It's actually not fully hydroponics, it grows in soil but there's a, you can put a medium through it that irrigates the little pots. So we'll be doing some herbs in the winter as the sun comes back further in the sky, they'll get full light. We'll be doing these herbs on our, on our walls in the winter this year, so that'll be kind of fun. And I'm also still waiting on some more quotes to get somebody to build this bed for me. I just don't have time. So big raised bed coming in here. It'll be planted with herbs that we'll be selling all winter. And then all of these shelves will be loaded up with pea shoots, sun shoots, radish shoots, and all kinds of other microgreens going into the winter. And that'll keep us busy all winter long. More Salanova plugs here. I've taken them outside of the greenhouse because the greenhouse has shade cloth on it, and so they were getting lanky, reaching for light, so I've just put them outside. But these will be going into the ground in the next couple weeks. Now we're heading out and checking out a couple of the other plots. Got a 
little bit of produce that I'm just gonna drop off to my neighborhood grocery store here quickly on the way out. So at this plot, backyard plot here, a lot is ready and we've got arugula to cut this week. Carrots, these carrots will be harvested this week. Turnips and radishes coming along nicely. These carrots will be around the same time as the ones that were in my front yard. I think they were planted at the same time. So a couple more weeks, maybe a few more weeks there. Arugula, these are Turnips, those are still a week or two off. This red Russian kale will be cut again this week. We've already got three cuts out of it. Beets will be harvested and those turnips will be finished off this week. This plot, I don't do any fall and winter planting because the house is on the south side of the plot and it casts a pretty big shadow in the winter. So it's a seasonal plot, goes from April, April till as far as the crops will be on the ground into November and we don't plant any winter crops here. Okay, at this plot, we do keep this one going into the winter and we've got a lot of winter crops planted here already. We've got our winter carrots established. They have now, they are germinating, coming up. We've got, this will be our last crop of beets for the season. I've planted more carrots here. So those carrots were seeded the first week of August and they're just coming up now. And um, you know this 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 plot is pretty is pretty good because it has a straight south aspect and we get tons of sunlight and we get a lot of sunlight in the winter actually so it's perfect in that regard. Last winter I had winter carrots here. In fact, they were in these two beds where this arugula is, and you guys can check out that video of winter carrots if you're curious about that. And. Uh, we're doing pretty good here. I mean, th this this soil is a heavy, heavy clay soil, so it holds moisture really well. Um, but we often have more problems with weeds here, and I, it's, it's, this plot's only on its second year, so we're still working out the weeds with our tarps that we keep on site, and our you know our flame weeding and stale seed bedding processes that we're doing. We're gonna we're gonna finish off this bed of radishes this week and probably that bit of turnips as well. We're gonna have to come in here and do some weeding, especially before it gets too bad. We had a lot of problems with weeds this year, probably more than, than we ever have uh, since I've started doing this because of our compost that was full of purslane weeds and a few other things like Russian pigweed. So we're gonna have to come back here and hand weed this site. All right, here at one of my, or our only bi-rotation site, and that means that this site gets a little bit less succession planting than the other ones because it's furthest in the network. But uh, here we've, we do are, we are going to do some fall and winter crops and uh, that's because it gets lots of sunlight and we already have had this kale established here which we haven't really been picking much in the summer because the demand goes down so much for it and it does get pretty heavy with bugs, with aphids. So. I just kind of let it sit in the, when we get the first frost, it'll kill those bugs off and then the kale will actually become a lot better. So we've got a nice uh, four beds, 25 feet uh, of kale to pick all winter. So that's gonna be great. And it should do fine without cover, just there. Even with a foot of snow on the ground, it'll be fine. Um, my lettuce, little bit of collateral damage there, but not so much that I'm gonna worry about it. We'll still get lots of harvests out of here. Seven beds all together. Looks like about, overall, I would say an 80% success, success rate. So that's good enough. Two beds of radishes, which we'll be harvesting here within maybe a week or 10 days. And uh, I will plant winter spinach in place of those. And then we've got some winter carrots here as well. So there's actually a lot to harvest off this plot for the next couple months. All right, so here at our main high rotation site and all of these beds have been rotated many times throughout the year. Some of them are already on to their, or just going on to their fourth rotation. Mark's planting some of them right now. And this plot, we will keep going into the fall and winter. Some of these beds will have overwintered crops like spinach. And I believe that would be all the overwintered crops we would have here. 
except for the greenhouses. The greenhouses, which are full of tomatoes right now, will go to a lot of winter greens once um, they start to be pruned more. And so you can see we're already starting to kind of kill some of them off, especially the ones that are uh, the ox hearts that we have too much of. It's a saturated market. I talked about this in my last video about tomatoes. Uh, free up some space so that we can plant some winter crops in here like spinach and greens, arugula, lettuce transplants. But I might also build both of these greenhouses into a bigger greenhouse, so still waiting on my quote from my builder to see if I can put that into the budget this year based on our farm revenues, and whether it's economical or not. But uh, it definitely will be going forward if I can, you know, have a tunnel that's 30 feet wide, 40 feet long, with higher sides, we can verticalize more in there, use more of the space, and definitely be able to put a lot more production into there. Because of the good aspect, the good south aspect of this site, this is the south here, we get a lot of sun here all season long, and um, that means we can get crops in the ground early here, and we can ride them pretty late, and especially the greenhouses. They get a lot of sunlight, and, um, some of our earliest crops. Well, our earliest crops are in these two greenhouses and the ones in my backyard. So, as soon as I find out whether I can build the new greenhouses in these places, I'll know exactly what's gonna go here and when, and uh, how much exactly. But if I wasn't gonna put new greenhouses in here, what I would do is similar to what I did last year, is we stripped our tomato foliage off pretty heavily. Um, it would be probably about by mid-September, sometimes early September, as the foliage from the bottom branches has been pruned off, the sun comes back down lower in the sky as it approaches the fall equinox. That brings more light into the ground and then we would be interplanting 30 inch beds amongst these greens or amongst these tomatoes. So a lot of things to consider going into winter. You know, where we plant things as we go into the fall and winter season is very important. The placement of those beds, considering the aspect, shade, and where they're positioned to other beds so that poly low tunnels can fit on there is very important. And that's kind of why I made this video to show you guys. So if you found that helpful, please hit the subscribe button right now. Like and share these videos with your friends. And check out my one day workshop, my one day profitable urban farming workshop. It's up now. There's a $50 discount code right down below the show notes here. If anybody signs up before September 4th, you get $50 off. And with this course, you have access to it forever. You can download it or you can stream it. You can watch it many times in case you miss something. So we will see you guys next time. All right, thanks for watching.